In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of resistances that are connected in parallel and de develop a, um, an expression or expressions for the current that flows through each of these two resistors as a function of the resistances and the current entering the node. Just restating, we know that the current coming into the node is going to equal I1 plus I2. Whatever comes in is going to split. Some of it's going to go this way, and some of it's going to go this way. Recall that our definition of parallel is that they share the same voltage. So if we define the voltage across these two parallel resistances as V, and using the expression for the equivalent um, resistance for two parallel connected resistors that we derived in a previous video, or we derived that the equivalent resistance of those two is the product R1, R2 over the sum R1 plus R2. We can then write an expression for V. The voltage across that parallel combination is equal to the current times the parallel combination of those two, or V is equal to I sub S times R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Now using that expression for V, let's write an expression for both I1 and I2. I1 is simply equal to the voltage across R1 divided by R1, which is equal to, there's the voltage, I sub S times R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 divided by R1. Well, this R1 cancels that R1, and we're left with the expression that we're looking for for I1. I1, then, is equal to I sub S times R2 over R1 plus R2. Doing similarly for I2, I2 is equal to V over R2, which is equal to I sub S times R1 R2 over R1 plus R2. That's V, all divided by R2. This time the R2s cancel, and we're left with an expression I2 is equal to, of course that's I sub S up there, is equal to I sub S times R1 over R1 plus R2. Those two formulas are referred to as the current divider formulas, and you'll notice that they're an awful lot like the voltage divider with some notable differences. Note here that I1 is proportional to R2. That means that as R2 gets bigger, holding R1 constant, I1 will get bigger. Let's point it out over here. If we let R1 stay constant, as I2 gets bigger, I1 gets bigger. I1 is proportional to R2. I1 gets bigger as R2 gets bigger. How do we understand that? Well, if we keep in mind that we have the same voltage across them, as R2 gets bigger, equivalently, that's like we're restricting the current flowing through here as R2 gets bigger, forcing the current then to flow through the other resistor. So R1 gets more current as R2 gets bigger, and vice versa for R1 getting bigger. Let's do a couple of examples here. Let's say that um, oh, I sub S equals 8 amps. And uh, let's let R1 equal 10 ohms, and R2, that's ohms, and R2 equal 30 ohms. From our current divider formulas here, I1 then is equal to I sub S, which is 8, times R2, which is 30 over 10 plus 30, or that's equal to 8 times 3 fourths, or 6 amps flowing through I1. And I2 will be similarly calculated 8 times 10 over 10 plus 30 equals 8 times 1 fourth, which equals 2 amps. 
So for consistency, let's just note that I1 plus I2, 6 plus 2 is 8, the current coming into it. Let's also note that because R1 is the smaller resistor, the current through R1 is going to be greater than the current through R2, where R2 is the larger resistor. Let's also note that these two ratios are very much like those in the voltage division, with the noted exception that uh, we've replaced or exchanged roles of R1 and R2. But once again, the current flowing through R2 is that percent, or the percentage of current flowing through I2 is equal to the percentage that R1 is of the combination of those two resistances. And the current I1, or the percentage of the total current flowing through I R1, is equal to the percentage that R2 is of the sum of those two. All righty, back to our example. Let's now allow R2 to increase to 70 ohms. We're going to leave R1, is still going to be 10 ohms, but now we're going to let R2 increase to 70 ohms. And let's once again calculate I1 and I2. I1 is going to equal 8 times. This time R2 is 70 ohms over 10 plus 70. That's equal to 8 times 7 eighths, which is equal to 7 amps. And I2 is going to equal 8 times R1 in the numerator, which is 10 over 10 plus 70. That's equal to 8 times 10 over 80 is 1 eighth. And again, that equals 1 amp. And again, the sum of those two currents must equal the current coming in. So under these circumstances, I1, 10 ohms. I2, 70 ohms. 7 eighths of the current, or 7 amps, comes through I1, and 1 amp goes through R2.